Hi, this is Paul Neal at Penn Productions. Uh, this is going to be the third installment of uh, handling muscle simulations using the Flex Modifier in 3D Studio Max. I'm going to get uh, a little bit fancier now. We're going to start having some stretchy muscles and some volume muscles as well, and we'll start working on those. So this is uh, really not going to be a, a whole lot different in some ways than uh, uh, how it's already been uh, done in the previous two. If you've watched those, we're going to use the same sort of method. Just going to go down to edible poly. I still have the neck uh, set up from the fatty tissue uh, using the vertex paint volume select and skin wrap, and we'll uh, address those in a second. So let's go and make a new um, muscle here. I'm going to use the uh, freeform tools, and I'm going to go in and create a new muscle. And uh, we're just going to call this uh, thigh. And now I'm going to just offset of two, draw on surface. I've picked the body of the uh, of the mesh here to work with, and I'm going to use the retopology tool. And so I'm just going to draw what my muscle is going to look like. It's going to come down. In here somewhere. We're going to be more specific now uh, and generate something a little closer to what might be reality. Now let's carry those up a bit further. And again, we want to keep these as square as possible. That looks pretty good. Right click to end. And I have myself a patch to start a muscle. I'm going to add um, the shell modifier. And with a shell, you can see I've already set it up with a inner, uh, inner amount pushing in and no outer amount. So it's just pushing down into it. And I think I'll just make it red as well. So we've got a nice red muscle to work with. So we've got some volume there. I'm going to collapse it down to an edible poly jump over and just relax it a little bit and uh, mesh smooth it relax it a bit more again and then I'm just going to use my shift tool make sure that it's set on uh, spherical radius unless you want to be selecting right through and just first I'm going to go and grab the uh, body and make it see-through and then just shape this out a bit more make sure it's covering the areas that I want Everybody likes to see the muscles looking right, so why not? We may as well try and make it look as right as possible. And so I'll pull that down in. Something like that, I'm guessing. We want it pretty close to the surface. So let's make sure it stays out to the surface wherever we can, because we're going to be skin wrapping to it again. And that looks pretty good. Maybe a bit more around the top here. You can use a relax brush. And a relax brush is nice. If you, if you relax it, you'll notice it relaxes in. But if you hold down Alt, it'll uh, try and keep the uh, volume of the mesh um, and not, uh, not change that on you, which is good. Because we want these pretty re um, even as much as possible, the uh, edge loops evened out. Uh, so that when we use the flex modifier and get edges on it, uh, the springs on it, uh, it will uh, it will deform correctly. So let's uh, just draw a couple more of these and, and build a couple more so that we've got uh, now one's going uh, down the back and we're going to go do the calf as well. So okay, so there we've got uh, three muscles that are starting to fit into the uh, mesh. And we'll continue from here and get those rigged up so that they actually uh, stretch properly with the uh, legs and uh, and have uh, you know a little more uh, natural movement to them. And then we'll uh, get the skin working on it. So now that we have the uh, muscles created, let's uh, put uh, get the rigging into them so that they move and and the like. So I'm just going to go and uh, hide off the uh, geometry and uh, leave the rig available to us, and uh, we'll start uh, setting this up. Make sure it looks all uh, right. I don't think I smoothed that one. There we go. And so we need to have these hooked in and and uh, you know rigged into the system that, uh, that we're going to be using. Now one of the things we can just do is just get them uh, linked up into the bones at least, so they're linked into the rig for now. And uh, now they'll actually, you know, follow the, follow the rig. 
And then we're going to uh, skin these, but we're not going to skin them directly necessarily. We're going to uh, do a little bit of uh, extra work uh, in getting these things to uh, to be skinned in. So we're going to have them stretchy and working as a stretchy uh, muscle system, and uh, that should be uh, should be pretty nice to get it uh, get it working that way. So let's make this into a bone effectively, and let's get the pivot point to somewhere we're going to need. I want to say edit working. Uh, um, or sorry, just effect pivot only, sorry. And we're going to move that pivot um, over. Now we should be able to go and grab and say snap to face. And I should be able to grab this and snap the pivot off to the top here. And I'll just plop that up top. And I'm going to just turn off the snap again. And whoops, we can uh, effect pivot. And let's turn it around. Let's point the X down. So we have essentially a muscle that is really acting more like a bone. So that should be pretty good, I think. I'm going to create now, snap back on again. And I'm going to go and create. Um, helper and I'm just going to make another point helper and I want to make it somewhere near the end of the uh, uh, muscle. Just turn snap off so I can move this around and drop it in here somewhere. And I'm going to align it orientationally up to the muscle so I'm going to use my align tool. Just turn off the position and turn on orientation so that it's orientated to it. Looks like we've got my muscle. I kind of want it pointing down this way. So let's go and rotate that a bit more. I want it more pointed down. And then we'll align that back into it again. That looks probably a little bit better. So the way a bone works is that we should be able to link that in. And I'm going to grab both of these. And we'll just go down to the um, character and bones. I'm just going to say uh, bone tools. And we're going to make these bones. So at this point, and the other thing I'm going to do is just turn off the freeze length for now so I can work with this. You can see that we've got a bone working exactly as you'd expect it to. So it's actually uh, pushing in and out, up and down. I'm going to pick the bone now and just make sure it's reset. I can say squash as well. And so we can actually get a squash and stretch on this muscle as we push this up and down. So we can just turn the muscle directly into, into that bone to make it really, really easy. So let's do the same thing over here now. Again, I'm just going to grab the pivot snap on. Oops. Probably want to grab there. Right, let's just plop that up top. Another way we can realign this too. It might be even easier. I'm going to align it up to the orientationally up to the bone. At least then it's pointing down the bone to get started. And just turn my snap back off. And guess it's sort of down it is. Down the location down there somewhere. And again, I'm going to create um, another point helper. So I'm just going to snap my snap back on. Helper's point somewhere down here. And let's align that orientationally. So it's there somewhere. And just turn off the snap again. That should look pretty good. Link it up. And again, we're just going to turn the bone on, freeze length off, just for the meantime, so that we can uh, adjust it. I'm just going to make sure it re resets. It's going to reset. Again, test it. Works like a bone. And we'll do the same thing again here now. I'll just align it up to this one. This should be... Probably about what I need, I would think. Let's 
Looks like it needs to be rotated down a bit more, just to point down along the muscle a bit better. Get snap back on. Another point helper. And we will align that again. Snap off just to be able to put it where we need it. So I'd say that looks pretty good. Let's link that in again. Okay, so we have the three muscles uh, set up as squashy, stretchy bones. And we're going to link them in. Again, the, uh, uh, these are linked together, so everything should be kind of moving as one. So everything's linked into its corresponding uh, location. We're going to need to do a little bit of extra work now to get them to squash and stretch. So first off, let's grab each one of them. Yeah, let's just freeze transform on all these. And we need a couple of things now. We're going to need to add an exposed transform to be able to get the rotation of this joint here. So I'm going to drop that in position and orientation. It doesn't actually matter where these sit in the scene but I always link them up one node, and so it's going to expose this node here. Now, if you look at, so it's exposing the lower leg here. If you look at the Euler uh, angles here, these aren't zero, and that's not going to help us a whole lot. So I'm going to use another point helper again, so lots of helpers. Drop that in, and I'm going to align it up in the same location, and I'm going to link it up to the, uh, its parent as well. And now in the exposed transform, I can turn off parent and expose that point. You can see I've got a 0, 0, 0 start point, and it rotates as it goes up. So I can do the exact same thing. Just grab both those. I'm just going to copy them off. I'm going to place them down at this joint here. And in the exposed transform, I'm going to make sure that I'm exposing that one. And I think the one I just added. Point. There we are. Let's just make it a little larger so we can get to it. I think it was already 0.05. Good. So it should be working now as well and, and feeding back data about the rotations from a zero point. So we can start using those for some pram wires. I'm going to fire up uh, the pram wire editor here just using the uh, Alt-5 on the keyboard. And then we can start hooking together and trying to get some of this stuff to drive. Now we want to be driving into the Z. For the most part, it's rotating on a couple axes here. I don't think I was very accurate when I built this rig in the first place uh, some years ago. So we want to load this up and have it be our driver. I always tend to load on this direction. We're going to be going along the x-axis because it's the one that's pointing down it. On the other side, we want to load up the local Z, connect them together, and then we'll see what happens. So we can now just drive the knee up, and we can say at times uh, 5, for instance. And you'll see it's going the wrong direction, so it'll probably be times negative 5. And it should pull down now. So that should look actually not bad. Maybe it's a little too much. We'll find out. It's the exact opposite. Let's grab this one. And we'll go times 5 on this one because we want it to do the exact opposite. We want it to push up where the other one pulls down. And see what we get there. Doesn't look too bad. Grab the uh, lower one as well and load that up on the X. And we have to use this exposed transform down here to drive this one. And again, this is going to be around the Z. And we'll connect those up with a well, put times 5 in there right now. And it looks like it's probably pulling down too far. So I want to say times 3. That might be good. As the foot kicks back, we should shorten the calf. And we should start looking pretty good at this point. OK, so we have the muscles running. But they're really not deforming properly. If you notice the top of the leg up here, 
you know, obviously isn't deforming correctly at this point in time. I might be, you know, stretching and whatnot, but it's just linked up to the thigh bone, and it really isn't doing what I would expect it to do up at the top, which is do some bending and flexing. So what we need now is to add in just a simple skin modifier. So yes, we're going to skin what is potentially now bone to bones uh, while it stretches. So I'm going to say, say add bones, and I'm going to add one up here and one there, and I'm going to want add one right there. So just those three should work perfectly well. I'm going to pick all of the vertices, select so like vertices on, and I'm just going to uh, turn up the weight to 100% there. And that effectively just bake them as well. So now I'm going to uh, use my paint tools, or they're just the built-in ones is what they really are. They're, they're driving. You can get the uh, hotkey set from the uh, my website just to be able to pull these up with uh, half strength. And uh, I'm going to say uh, mouse up and uh, pressure fence strength. And I'm just going to paint in some weight on the corner of that one. So now you can see we're getting some nice flexing going on. And I'm going to pick this one. Do the same thing on this side. Maybe something like that. And now we can see that it's giving a much better sort of flex that we'd expect. Here it is kind of crushing and falling apart. So a little bit of blending weights should do it. And I'm just going to blend that into the top. And then maybe even blend top down into the air. And now I should get a nice smooth transition. So we're looking for a nice transition between those. So now, you, now we're definitely getting a much cleaner, much nicer deformation on that. Might even just strengthen this a bit more top. One of the things you always want to do with skin, too, is you see these crazy colors here, these bright colors. That's because it's near zero, so we want to use it just to remove zero weights, so just get rid of any um, weighting that just doesn't need to be in there anymore. So that looks pretty good. So you can see that's working really nice now. It's flexing really nicely with the leg and then stretching down at the bottom. And so I'm just going to drop that same one over, and you can see it just messes up the, the uh, muscle completely. So we just, uh, at frame zero, always deform off back on again. And I did that just simply because I had everything already, uh, all the m muscles uh, already, or so the bones set up in there. So I'm just going to crank that up to one again, and I'll just paint this in. So let's do a little bit more rigging on that and have that uh, get shorter from the top so that it doesn't run in and pull the skin together here and uh, and pull it down. So if we look at, again, the local axis down along the X, so I'm going to grab pram wires again. I'm going to load that muscle. I'm going to load this exposed transform. And you can see it got longer right off the bat as soon as I added it. Uh, we'll just say times uh, negative uh, two, maybe even four. And so we now pull those down. So that should even keep the back of the leg together pretty good. We're not to see how that works, but it's actually holding together pretty nice there. And let's start setting up flex then. So on top of this, we're going to add a flex modifier. And just like before, we want to use weights off. We're probably going to want the Runcuda and probably samples of four to get started with. It's a good way to get started. So we can see this bouncing all over the place. We're going to lock down some of the uh, verts to start with by selecting them. So in the edge vertices, you go down and, and select some of the uh, verts. We're going to just grab maybe four at the bottom down there. And I'm going to grab a row of them across the top here. Those will no longer be used in the um, in the solution as we uh, as we get it set up. So they'll be uh, they won't bounce around. You can see them already pulling away. 
And then in the weights and springs, grab all the verts, enable the advanced springs, go into options and hold shape. And I'm going to start off with maybe a three and add them. And let's say show springs. No, actually it wasn't too bad. That was a pretty good guess right off the bat. I'm going to remove and try that actual three. We want sort of, we don't want too many. Now that's pretty good. Let's check the uh, suggested strength, 0 0.024. So we're looking for a zero in there. Also, it'll probably just blow up on us if we don't um, set that correctly. And you can see it now just going wild on us. So we can set this up with probably lots of strength and lots of sway. And again, the sway should be called dampening. So it really isn't sway. And now we're starting to get a better looking solution on that. So it's actually looking pretty nice. It's holding together with the, uh, what we have. Now, with one of the, again, one of the things we can do is we can always turn down the amount of flex you know, and, and just stop it from bouncing entirely, not trying to stiffen it up, but just stopping it from bouncing as much as it is. So that's probably looking pretty nice. Let's just leave it up to one for now. That's good. Let's do the same. Okay, so I've set up the, uh, the calf here, but what we're getting is real because it's further down, it's going to move a lot more. You can see it's just jumping all over the place. Now, we could try the suggested strength is, um, uh, is uh, quite low. We could actually try pushing it up a bit and see if we get a muscle blowing up on us. That'll help keep it together a bit better. But no, it's just going to blow up if we go too high. So I went up really high there. We want to go probably lower down and make sure that we don't get a blow up. And it might still be causing some problems. I'm going to lower it a bit more again and I'm going to take up my strength up higher and probably my amount of uh, flex down lower just to make sure it's not bouncing around too much. And we want to add in these these uh, three muscles that we're uh, dealing with, these uh, muscle bones or uh, you know, muscles that we've got. So we've got the uh, setup here. We've got vertex uh, paint for painting in our weights. We've got our volume select set up for texture map with vertex color map and set the vertex color. And then we have our skin wrap and it's currently uh, set up to the skin, uh, skin to the neck. And I'm going to add the thigh. Give it a sec while it uh, calculates. You can see it calculating down at the bottom and adding it in. Okay, so that's added. And now we have to go about painting some weights in here. So we'll back down to our vertex paint. And you can see now the skin isn't doing anything because we're not passing any selections up the stack. So if I show the weighting here, it's just completely black. Well, it looks like I've got some from something previous. And I've got around the neck. So let's just paint that black in and just make sure that we have nothing at all. I'm going to turn off the show end result because that'll be slowing down the vertex color painting quite significantly. There we go. And I'm just going to show the wireframe so I know where I'm painting. And now let's paint with white. And let's just turn back on the real time because I had it off. I had update on mouse up turned. There we go. I'll use that uh, real time. And I'll add some of this back muscle in. And we should be able to see it when we go in and show the end result. Now you can see what's happening. It's actually flexing like crazy now and pulling it around. So I'm just going to pull my weight of my brush down and we're going to have to do some blurring here. So you can see I can even avoid areas that I know just aren't going to work well. Let the muscle pull right out of the back of the, uh, uh, the leg if I want. It really doesn't matter because those muscles are never going to be seen. 
deal with how much it gets affected by the flex by how white it gets painted. So let's just do some blurring down and then it's probably still doing too much and we've got too much flex in it in areas. So we'd have to go in and adjust the uh, amount of flex now uh, to uh, tame it down but we are getting some nice motion in the in the muscles, some nice bulging happening there at the back, some nice bulging when the leg goes straighter. Probably just a little too much flex when it hits the floor really quickly. Again, another solution is, is to actually ramp up and down the flex. Uh, you can use the velocity of the object. So if it's stopping quickly, turn down the amount or turn up the strength of the flex um, to be able to pull the, uh, the muscle back tight again. So there you go. There's a bit more uh, accurate muscles uh, with a little bit more um, to them, getting some really nice motion happening. And you can see it's not playing real time. It's not supposed to. Um, it's going to get very slow once all the muscles are in. But you know, any big muscle system is not going to be um, running uh, super fast. And it's certainly not going to be turned on when the animator is going to be working on it. All this would just get shut down, or this would be in a proxy model that would be loaded. So we'd uh, bake this all out to uh, point, uh, point cache, possibly, or, or other methods uh, for render time, so that you're not having to calculate this all at render time. There you go. There's uh, a more advanced muscle system.